We continue with our interview with Emily Lee, a former member of the All Red Polygamy Group, next on Polygamy, What Love Is This? Thank you for watching again. This is another interview with Emily Lee. Uh, she is, was born and raised in the <coughs> All Red Polygamy Group. She left several years ago. Uh, we've had uh, three interviews with her in the past and we've got so much to talk about, we're doing it again. And uh, hopefully help our viewers understand some of the things, some of the challenges and the problems that people face, uh, not only while they're in the group, but also leaving, getting out, and then life after polygamy. And of course, there is hope after polygamy, as you have discovered, yes, and I have discovered. But it took me 25 years to find the hope um, that I had after polygamy. How long did it take you after you left the AUB to discover that the Bible really was full of truth and Jesus alone is Savior? I was in my 20s, I think, before I started to understand that more so i i would say it it took me a good 15 10 to 15 years 15 years took me mm -hmm. 25 years before i did and and then i was really pleasantly shocked to discover that most of what i'd been taught was not true it was not biblical it was not what god actually does teach yeah and and that they are living on myths and on on the counterfeit gospel not right. the true gospel of jesus right. And it made a huge difference in my life, and I'm sure it did in yours, too. Yeah. I, I'm 25 years. I feel like I'm starting new right now. Yeah. I feel like I'm starting to really understand my life and my relationship with the Lord yeah. in a way that I never have before. Right. And a lot of that is learning to understand the abuse that happened. And, and right. When you, when you understand, when you know the truth, then you can understand the lie and, exactly. how, and how oppressive and horrible it actually is and continues with mm -hmm. the people ruining the lives of so many hundreds of people so many people oh, and generations of people yeah generationally absolutely yep. we're back to joseph smith uh now i know that that your the aub is different from the flds polygamy group but i want to ask a question that see if there's a relationship between their priesthood and the FLDS, which they, they would ordain 12-year-old boys to the priesthood. And from the very point that that 12-year-old boy was in the priesthood, every female, uh, from the mother to the sisters to every female in the group, had to uh, submit to that boy because he was a male and he had the priesthood. Does anything like that take place in the AUB? Not that I'm really aware of, honestly. I I think the boys, I, it was 12 or 14 when they could get the priesthood. Uh -huh. I don't recall, though, that... There was submission like to that yeah, degree. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that... And yet in the Bible, there's no way... First of all, not everybody got the priesthood, only, only the, the sons of Aaron or those who generated from him. But I think they had to be like 20... 25 years old before they could be ordained into the priesthood. So there's a big difference That's in what they do. A huge difference. Not <laughs> biblical at all in any way. Um, but they did require females to submit to the male as a general rule. Yes. In the oh, group, yeah. No matter, That's for no sure. Who you are. Um, now, last time we talked about. I quoted someone who said that one in polygamy or in Mormonism, one male has uh, more value than an infinite number of females. And, uh, and I carried what I want to go f with. I want to run with it now on what did that do to you after you left? I know with me, I carried that with me after I left. I had no value. And you basically talked about that in, the last, mm -hmm. in our last interview, that you had to get used to having your value. Right. Um, how did you deal with, I, I actually didn't know my value until I did become a Christian. All, and then all during that time, I carried with me that, that I was less than other people. I was mm -hmm. less than any man and mm -hmm. less than other people. How did you deal with that? Or, or did you have to 
deal with it? It's something that is there and whether or not it's something that you consciously think of or consciously are aware of, it's definitely there. So it's something that I'm currently dealing with in my life, really realizing that God wants me to be happy, that I matter Mm -hmm. and that I'm capable and that he's given me gifts that I can discover and understand and help to bless people with Mm -hmm. and that I don't need to just be a doormat to my husband Mm -hmm. or the church or or any male less than any any male exactly yeah Yeah. and and that's not to to you know to bring ourselves up higher than them but we're all God created many many scriptures that tell us that God doesn't show favoritism exactly to male or female in fact in Ephesians there's no male or female in God's kingdom. We're all equal with him. And in fact, in Ephesians 5, 21, it says that we are supposed to, to, to bring peace, to, to keep the peace. We're to submit one to the other. Right. And, and that's not female to male. It's one to each other. Right. And just, and that's to keep the peace. And that's where you, that's the true Christian approach to things like that. Uh, I think Mormonism as a whole would crumble away and crash if they adopted an idea like that. Um, Many people who leave polygamy make it a point to stand up for the truth. They find out the truth and they want to tell others about the truth. Yes. Um, Not only about the truth of the Bible and of God's true gospel, but also about what's going on inside polygamy. Yeah. And and then there's others who are afraid to or they have the the idea live and let live. You know, right. Leave them alone and, and they leave me alone. I'll leave them alone and right. so on. Others are afraid to talk about it because of their shunned or disowned or alienated or lies manufactured about them. Uh, how have you been treated by people inside the group because you stood up and told the truth? You've stood up for what's true. I don't think people are very happy with me (laughs) anymore. People that used to be outgoing and caring towards me have uh, not been that way. Have they said anything against you or just pretend like you don't exist? There's a lot of pretending like I don't exist. And um, I've had a few that have said certain things to me. Why is it necessary? Um, what are you trying to gain? And, you know, different things. Um, I guess the mama bear in me comes out and I think, how can you not speak out on it? How can you not help? Even if you help one person, is that not enough to say something, to do something? Yeah. How many kids are suffering Women are suffering. Men are suffering. Yeah, there's a lot of men that Mm -hmm. suffer through this, too. Yeah. Yeah, I was accused one time by a very close loved one that I was so angry and carried such a huge grudge against my treatment that now I have to turn back and exact my revenge. And that's why (laughs) it's not revenge at Mm -hmm. all. It's not that at all. It's not about revenge. It's truth-telling. It is. It's about telling the truth, and it's about helping people to understand that they matter and for women to understand that their children matter Mm -hmm. and that God has a plan and a purpose for them. And it's good. And it's good. It's Mm -hmm. not to suffer. Right, right. And what's that in Jeremiah? I know the plans I have for you. Jeremiah 29, 11. It's my favorite verse. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope in the future. Yes. Oh, I wish the polygamy group women and men would 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 know that verse Mm -hmm. and understand that outside of the filter of polygamy. Right. Um, last time we briefly discussed that leaders don't confess and repent. They expect the membership to do, uh, but they Mm. themselves will never, uh, admit to or confess their illegal activities. How does God's grace, what do they teach about God's grace and how does God's grace cover them if they don't confess? That's what confuses me. (laughs) How, how does it cover them if, if they don't confess, if they're not even willing to admit that they have or possibly could have done something Mm -hmm. wrong or even offensive how do they repent of that do they do they teach god's grace at all not in a very common way 
Not the biblical way. By not the means. biblical way, no. But no. they do teach forgiveness, and again, not the biblical way. Well, I think a lot of the ones that are shouting forgiveness are the ones that are continually abusing people. But they know inherently, maybe they don't admit it, but they know that they're, they're doing wrong. They know that what they're doing is not right. Oh, definitely. They definitely do. So, so there's some disconnect there that they won't apply to themselves their own doctrine. And that has confused me so much about my dad. I, I look at my father and I think, how can you lead a church of 10,000 people when not only have you done what you've done, but you continue to abuse people just out in public? And then they judge others for right. the same abuse that they're guilty of doing right. and they won't admit. But they are better and higher and called. Mm. And so when you're God's chosen people, apparently that means that you can treat other people I... like garbage. And yet those other people need to praise you and adore you mm -hmm. and give you what you're due. And that's exactly, they must lie to themselves. I, I don't know how it goes. I haven't, uh, I've never had the opportunity to talk to anybody who's been that high up that would discuss things like this. But as, as I was preparing these discussion points, I, it reminded me of a verse in Psalm that I would like to put up on the screen for our viewers, especially anybody in polygamy, and especially if one of the leaders or abusers happened to watch this. And it's in Psalm 7, verses 15 and 16, which says, He makes a pit, digging it out, and falls into the hole that he has made. His mischief returns upon his own head. That's what happens to people who judge others for a sin they themselves are guilty of and won't admit. Mm -hmm. They they fall into their own trap. Yes. And they get caught in their own schemes. They do. And God will see to it, by the way. Yes. Maybe I not in this that. life, but certainly at mm -hmm. some point, God will see to it that that happens as a, a spiritual principle. Now, how can we, as ex-members, as Christians help them understand this deep and dangerous hole that they are digging for themselves. I mean, sometimes I just, God, what can I do? What more can I do? What can I say? D do you have any insights I, to I this? think for me, at my level of understanding, is loving them and being, being an example to them while also not allowing them to take advantage of or... Yeah. use you. Yeah. So definitely speaking the truth um, and, and showing that you're not a bad person. You're not. Yeah. That you let, they, they, they think if you leave that you're going to have a miserable life, you know, yeah. you'll be sorry you left, but no, our lives are great. Yes. <laughs> so much better. <laughs> uh -huh. So much better. And, and I'm never sorry that I left ever. Oh, I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. <laughs> One lady from the FLDS says, if I ever left, all I would, all I, my only choice is to be a prostitute. That's what they taught them. That's what they teach them. That's awful. This was from the FLDS group in Bountiful, uh, Canada. Wow. A and that was her, her only alternative was to be a prostitute. But she doesn't realize she was prostituting herself by being a plural wife to earn eternal life. Right. And of course, she would never be able to see that. It's no, no, it would seem so harsh to her to hear someone say that. Oh yeah, you couldn't. Yeah, you couldn't really reach them at that point. Looking back, raised in the AUB, who received the most attention, Jesus or Joseph Smith? Joseph Smith. Did you celebrate his birthday? Mm. Some do, some don't. I think some do. I don't remember celebrating his birthday. When is it? I think it's just a couple of days before Christmas. And that's why it's an issue with with some of the groups because they'll celebrate Joseph Smith's birthday rather than Christmas Day. Wow. That's it, interesting. That's with some. I just wondered if that was in your family. Or, before or I ever left the church, I remember listening and meeting. That's what they called church service on Sundays was meeting. 
and I remember listening and counting how many times they said Joseph Smith versus how many times they said Jesus. Yeah. And it was like 29 times they said Joseph Smith in, you know, this half hour, 45 minute period. Mm-hmm. And two times they said Jesus. And sometimes the only time that, that they would say it is when they close prayer in Jesus' yep. name, amen. Yep. You know? So that was something that I was always curious about. Yeah. Did you ever wonder wondered. about it then or not? Was it later that you wondered about that? I, I wondered about it when I was younger, yeah. definitely. And then as I got older, I realized that they were worshiping Joseph Smith and not Jesus Christ. They're certainly following his doctrine. They're certainly mm-hmm. not following the, go- the gospel of Jesus for sure. Um, now, the Kingstons, I know they teach themselves. Yes, you know, they do. <laughs> they, we, we're the greatest, and they teach their history. Mm-hmm. They don't even go back and teach Joseph Smith's history or Mormon history as much now as they do their own history of, of being in a polygamy group, which is not good <laughs> yeah. at all because Jesus alone should be the focus. Um, people say 2020 vision, hindsight is 2020 vision. And looking back uh, with some of the indoctrination, the filters that we come out with, we come out with a lot of baggage. Yeah, we do. We do. Uh, and, and then when we start realizing how wrong some of their teachings were uh, and we realize how strange they actually are, what was the strangest or the most unique uh, or the most spiritually dangerous thing that you were taught that, as you look back at it now? Oh... I don't know that I could put, I, I think probably just the authority of the priesthood um, would have been. And the priesthood is everything to them. Everything, everything. Yeah. And that's why I say, I think that they think that they are their own gods and that they. Well, that's what their priesthood is, isn't it? Acting for God on the. It earth. is, yes. They believe that they're that God is communicating with them to communicate to the people. The people. And how is a group of people, do they not collectively look at a leader and understand he's just a man? Yeah. He's, yeah. he's not any more powerful or spiritually divine than any of them are. And he's going off of what he thinks and believes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think they understand. I'm, and of course, I didn't. I thought that when the leader said something, that God told him to say that. Mm-hmm. I had no idea that it was coming out of his own brain. Yeah. <laughs> and I wondered often why. I, and I, I look back at it now. You know, you've heard the saying that honey catches more flies than vinegar. Right. Why, why are they so cruel and abusive, thinking that they're going to keep members uh, by, by being cruel? Because they are. I have wondered that a lot. Yeah. I've wondered it a lot with the LDS church as well. Growing up in neighborhoods and being the outcast yeah. to the LDS culture and community. I would think if they believed what they're supposedly teaching, they would be kinder to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe they are learning that a little bit more as an outreach and to gain more members. Um, well, they're losing so many members. They, you know, they're trying to stop the hemorrhage. I think. Yeah, and it, I think a lot of that is that we have access to so much more information, so we yeah, can learn true. the truth true. so much faster than we ever could before. Yeah, but love, love draws people. Uh, threats and damnation threats and all that doesn't draw people. No, but it does work on their fears. Right, and that's what they do. They work on your fear. That, in my opinion, that is because they are so insecure in themselves. How else can they keep people? Because how else can they keep people? Yeah. And so it really is a means of control because they don't, they know that they're not good. They know that they're abusive and dangerous. And yet, how do they keep people around? You know, they don't have the ability to love right. and be compassionate in ways yeah. that most people are. Someone, someone once said that they can't teach about the real Jesus because they don't know him. Exactly. I believe that's true. And they don't know him. They know a false Jesus, Lucifer's right. brother. 
right. not the God Almighty who is Jesus in the body. Uh, but now, now many folks in polygamous communities through the years did dumpster diving. I know the poly kickster groups do it big time. Did, did people in the AUB do it? Were you involved with any of that? <laughs> I don't ever remember dumpster diving. I do remember, though, uh, on multiple occasions, things being brought to our house from um, dumpsters, from dumpsters uh -huh. like, you know, bakery goods or... Um, I've I've heard a lot of people that went dumpster diving. And do they still do it? Do you know? If they I still don't do know it? if they still do. I don't know if they have created a system that's similar to the LDS where they have a food pantry of sorts mm -hmm. in their church now. Mm -hmm. um, I know that there's still a lot of, of generationally uh, poor people in the church and... Um, yeah, that was definitely a big thing. I think when you said that, I think if the Kingston group, because they, they're big in dumpster diving, saving every penny and dime for the God's kingdom, <laughs> but if they did have a pantry, it would be from dumpsters. <laughs> really, I really believe that, that, because that's their thinking, you know. Yeah. Uh, we were taught from the credit. Of course, we didn't get all of our money. The AUB and the FLDS are different than the Kingstons because they take all your money, 100%. Yeah. Right. And right. then they let you have some if they think that you really you need, need it. you need it. Yeah. So it's a little bit different with the money uh, yeah. in, in comparison to the two groups. Um, but if you need a $10 for groceries, they let you have seven, not 10 or 50, you know, that let you have 20 instead yeah. of 50. Um, and so if they did have a pantry, it wouldn't be <laughs> yeah. with real food. So you'd have no other option then but to dumpster dive. No, that saves money. It saves money for the kingdom. They're more righteous if they do that because more money goes to the kingdom that way. Let's talk about parenting and relationships. Uh, generally, people learn from their experiences from Parents, children see how their parents are as they grow up and they and maybe they see how their families are and relatives and so on, how their behaviors are. And they'll often mimic or follow in the footsteps or the mm -hmm. behaviors that they see yeah. uh, their parents do. And polygamy groups typically present um, help that don't typically present healthy and safe relationships. No. At all. At all. Especially male female relationships, mm -hmm. parenting relationships or marriage relationships, uh, nor is any healthy relationships ever taught, only based on their own standards, which is not quite right. How has this affected you? How has it affected your skills in the relationship area? It's affected me in every aspect of my life. I'll do my best not to cry. Um, I definitely married someone like my father and ended up in a relationship very similar to my parents' relationship. Mm. And I parented very similarly to my mother. Mm. And it has been really hard. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to look at it, you know, to kind of step back and look at it and understand that when you're in a marriage, you are partners, you become equal partners, equal partners. Exactly. And you're working together. And it's not that the wife is working 24 seven nonstop and the husband is going to work and then coming home and kicking his feet up and being served a hot meal, not fixing his own plate or helping with the children or the dishes yeah. mm -hmm. or Whatever. education or any of it is yeah. needed. So I, I say the real world in my own head, I think I, you know, if you look outside of these religious cults, you see where people work together mm -hmm. and fathers come home and participate in activities with their children or in taking care of the home and mm -hmm. they support their wives and yeah, that one's a really tricky one for me. That's definitely something that I'm working through and I'm... And it's hard, it's difficult simply because we never had it mimicked, we never had no. a model for us. No, Or taught to us. Exactly. Uh, in any way at yeah. all. Uh, it was all a skewed 
version yes. of the, the man-woman relationship or the parental relationship. Right, right. Um, and at least in my own teachings, it was never done in love, ever. No. It was no. you submit or else, boom, and that was it. You know? That's how it was with my dad. My mom was definitely different. I, I do know that my mom loved us mm -hmm. and, and she loved on us. And it wasn't That's just, awesome. it wasn't just you submit or else. Yeah. She acknowledged that we were people, yeah. even though we were tiny people, we were people. You were still people. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I know a lot of people from polygamy who were that way, a lot of mothers who were that way. My own mother wasn't. She had no mama bear syndrome. She, she had no, she never defended the children. It was always threats and wicked you're wicked mm -hmm. and god hates you and he'll get you and, yeah you know and my love was never modeled to me yeah my dad has wives like that yeah so i have siblings that i've watched be raised that way it's so sad and they come to my mom for that yeah. attention for that love wow that's nice yeah that's it, nice. it is nice uh that they have access to that but it's heartbreaking yes it, it is sad um we're at the end of time for for this and thank you we've covered a lot of territory uh, we want our viewers to know that polygamy is not from God if you're in a polygamy group God never commanded it he never taught it in the Bible Jesus is the Savior he knows how to be saved and he told us how to be saved and it's to believe in him he never taught polygamy ever and uh, you can read the New Testament and just to find that out and discover that Jesus did teach love. Mm -hmm. um, First John says God is love and perfect love drives out fear. So if you're living in fear, if you're not living in the love of God, you can. You can do that by turning to what the Bible teaches, turning to Jesus only as Savior and not follow the teachings of men, the doctrines of men as the polygamy group teaches. Thank you very much. Thank you Emily, for having for, me again. for coming again. We really appreciate it. And um, any time that we can help someone come out of polygamy, contact us because we will. We'll help you and we'll answer your questions if you would like to contact us. So thanks. Thanks again. Thank you. And we do want those from polygamy and Mormonism to know that we have these discussions not to mock your religion or to shame those who are still in polygamy, but to encourage you to check out what you believe and why you believe it. If you want to please God, then do what he says by investigate, uh, investigating what you're taught about him, about Jesus and about salvation. Those who have been born and raised in polygamy believe that what we were taught from the cradle, but there's more to it than they've told you. Please don't rely upon feelings to determine if polygamy is true. Instead, rely upon the person who is the truth, Jesus Christ himself. You'll find his testimony about himself in the Gospels. The Gospel of John is particularly helpful. Feelings do not determine truth. Jesus does. And you'll discover that Jesus never taught about polygamy as a way or the way to eternal life. In fact, Jesus never taught about polygamy at all, as we've said, and since he alone is the Savior, he knows how we are saved. Thank you for watching.